Hi, I'm Patrick and this is the mach -E Vlog. In the past few days, we've seen some sales numbers about Ford EVs that seemed really positive, but then the next day we heard that Ford is delaying some of their EV plans. So we're gonna take a deeper look at that right now. Before we dive in and analyze some of the recent news, let's sort of take a look back and see exactly what Ford has been reporting over the past week so that you can get caught up if you haven't seen it already. So it made a little bit of big news they were talking about in uh, Q1 2024, Mach-E and Lightning and E-Transit sales were up significantly. So they reported that Mach-E sales were up 77% over a year ago. They sold 9,589 Mach-E's Q1 2024, F-150 Lightning sales were up 80% and they sold 7,743 Lightnings in Q1. Uh, Ford E-Transit was up 148%. And I'm gonna mention hybrids because hybrids uh, were up 42% and equaled 38,000 in sales. So uh, that's important because of some of the stuff that we're gonna get into in a, in a little bit. Uh, we generally, like, I just want to focus on Ford, but I should uh, bring up some of the context of other EV manufacturers. Uh, Rivian slightly beat their numbers. I believe it was, uh, they uh, sold 12,000. They were expecting about 10,000, or analysts were expecting about 10,000. But the big one in the room that everybody wants to compare, and it's sort of a bellwether for where the overall EV market is going, and that's because they're the leader, it's obviously Tesla. And Tesla made really big news uh, because their Q1 sales were down 8.5% over the previous uh, Q1 of 2023. So Q1 2024, they sold 386,810 Teslas. Um, analysts were expecting 454,000. In Q1 2023, they sold 423,000. So that was an 8.5% decline year over year. Um, if you look and compare it to Q4 2024, it looks a little bit worse because in Q4 2024, they sold 484,000 cars. So that's a 14.5% drop. So a, a lot of the things that you've been seeing in the news lately, I talked about EV sales are, are slowing. Um, and it's across the board. And uh, you know, there's headlines like nobody wants EVs. People are still buying EVs. There's still a lot of EVs being sold. Um, Ford and Rivian are showing that there's still some interest. I think a lot of it has to do with pricing. Uh, pricing is a huge issue. EVs have started to come down in price. There's been some big price cuts. We have a video on some of the price cuts that Ford just announced on the Mach-E and the Lightning. Uh, on top of that, there are some uh, really great leasing and financing deals that are now coming out. Tesla is starting to like discount. A lot of times they would only discount their cars right at the end of the quarter. Um, but uh, recently, as of uh, like a couple of days ago, I saw they were already discounting some of their Model Ys that are currently in inventory. So there's, there's gonna be some numbers out there. And I think what it really is, is um, people still want EVs, but they want, to make sure that they're getting uh, value for their money. Um, there's some other difficulties as in uh, for the last part of the last year, interest rates are really high. That trickles down, of course, like when you're trying to like trade in a car that you had like maybe 1.9% financing and you may be underwater because the, the car went down in value. Now you're trying to trade it in. And in addition to losing value on your trade in, now, they're asking for like 6% or, or, or worse for your financing deal. So that new car became way more expensive for a lot of people. So there's a lot of factors going on. We don't really get into the uh, an analyzing like what is going on with the overall market, but we just know, you know, it's pretty obvious there's some factors like that that are affecting things. Um, we should say, you know, I always try to remind people is like EV sales are still doing pretty well. Overall, if you look, if you compare it to like two years ago, three years ago, EV sales are on the right trajectory going up. They're just not going up as fast as uh, a lot of people were hoping that they would. So uh, it's it's going well, but it's not going as well as uh, they wanted, which is okay. You know, uh, the market is what the market is. So um, a lot of people saw Tesla saying their sales are, are down. 
Ford were saying their sales are up. And then a couple of days later, Ford announced that they were slowing some of their EV rollouts in the, in the future. And uh, let, let's go over those and then we'll start talking about why. So uh, T3, which is their um, next generation uh, EV truck that's gonna be built in Blue Oval City in Tennessee. It's a huge, huge factory. That's their like next generation factory. It's gonna be super automated, introduce a lot of new technologies. Um, huge campus, it's their biggest factory they've built in, in many years. And it also is gonna include a battery factory as well. But T3 was supposed to come out in 2025. That's been pushed back to uh, 2026. So not a, a huge push on that one. Um, and you know, it's, it's disappointing to see it get pushed back, but it's not a huge push by, by a year. Cause I believe, uh, originally it was like late 2025. So late 2025 to sometime in 2026, it's maybe up to a year, maybe even less, who knows? We'll see. The big one that disappointed a lot of people is the three row SUV EV is getting pushed back from 2025 to 2027. That was going to be built in Oakville, Ontario, up in Canada. Uh, the union up there is, of course, very disappointed. They're trying to figure out um, and work with Ford and like, what are they going to do with their employees that are going to be out of work for a significant amount of time? So there, there's that factor that's you know very concerning for anybody that's working up there and the local economy. Um, and a lot of people sort of saw this as like, this is gonna be their like EV Explorer, US version. So, uh, it, you know, had a lot of high expectations. The Kia EV9 is out, it's a three row SUV. There's a lot of interest and demand about that. Uh, Lucid Gravity is not coming out for a, a bit, but a lot of people have a lot of excitement over that. And like, that's gonna be the vehicle that makes Lucid actually successful compared to their current Lucid Air line. Um, so people were like, we need a three row SUV. We need, um, there's a big demand for it and Ford should be providing it. They're so successful with the Ford Explorer. So um, this makes obvious sense that Ford would be pushing this up, not pushing it back. So that that's a bit interesting. And I'll get into maybe some of the reasons why I think that's, that's happening. Um, Ford did also talk about that uh, they have a Skunk Works team that's working out in Irvine, California, just a few miles from here actually. And uh, it's been uh, like Jim Farley let it slip, not really slip, I guess he announced it a um, month or so ago, maybe two months ago now, uh, that there's a Skunk Works team. It's been uh, working for two years on developing a low cost EV platform that would be the basis of multiple vehicles at high volume and profitable from day one. There's not really much information other than that statement. A lot of people are trying to guess what may be coming down the, the pipeline uh, in regards to that, and we will guess as well in a little bit. Um, but Ford did mention that they'll release more info on that um, when they get closer to re the release date. So um, really still don't have any information on that, but they did mention that in their you know, overall EV plans. Um, they also talked about basically they want to have hybrid versions of every vehicle in their, their lineup. Um, and that's where a lot of EV fans are, are disappointed. They don't want to see hybrids. They want to see full EVs. And I get that. I understand that. Um, but that's what Ford is doing. And we'll, we'll dive into that as well. Um, they're still on track for a, another new commercial vehicle coming out of the Ohio assembly plant. And that basically might be like something else. They have the e-transit right now, which is like a cargo van. There may be another commercial vehicle. Um, that's all that we've seen is like, it's a commercial vehicle. We don't know if it's smaller or bigger than the e-transit. Um, maybe um, from the ground up design, we don't really know. Um, they, they also just talked about like what they're actually doing. And we have a video that went into a deep dive on all of the Ford EV future plans. Of course, some of that's been changed and pushed back, but they are still going forward with Blue Oval City. Um, again, huge manufacturing plant and also a battery plant, plus a training center, plus they are gonna have some third party vendors um, that are gonna be located there as well. That's still on track. Um, construction is going along very quickly. You can see uh, they have some uh, updated photos of like the factories just being built. And uh, we were originally gonna see the first output of that in 2025. 
That's been pushed back to 2026 with T3. Uh, in addition, they're building two battery plants in Kentucky. Uh, I believe they have 43 gigawatt hour capacity each. Um, apparently one of those will still come online 2025, 2026. The other one, they're gonna slow roll it basically. Um, it, won't come, it won't go into production uh, capacity until a little bit later, no date um, released on that. But that's basically just giving them flexibility. They also have a, a battery plant that they're uh, building in uh, Michigan as well. So they still have like all of the, the, the pieces are being built to do their EV transition. It's just a matter of a little bit about uh, timing. Um, there, there's a lot of questions about all of this, and this is now where we'll sort of dive into a little bit of our opinion and projection, as well as mix in still some facts, of course. Um, but it, it was a bit confusing for a lot of people to see, like EV sales are doing great, Ford had a great uh, announcement on that, followed by we're delaying uh, some of our EV plans, um, and we're going more hybrid. And I think this is sort of like a, if, we've you know watched any of the news you've seen like uh, Rivian is struggling um there it seems like they're doing great but they actually like they need to get the R2 out um in 2026 or uh if they have any delays in that they may run out of capital so it's sort of like um they're in a, the, a, a race against the clock slash launch of the R2 to get um a different profit line going uh, Lucid is bleeding money left and right. They're getting cash infusions. So in some ways, like people are talking about like startups have it uh, made because they don't have to worry about their, their legacy line and they're not competing with their own products. Um, this I think illustrates where just the opposite, like Ford actually has this advantage of being able to sort of pull the levers of, of their production and their sales based off what's working and what the market is asking for. So as we've seen, you know, the, the sales um, of EVs are not going up as quickly as people wanted, even for Tesla. So um, if you are an EV startup and all you sell are EVs and they're not doing as well as you want, and there's nothing you can do. You just have to like hope the market adjusts and all of a sudden there's a huge demand for your EVs and you can get profitable. Ford is uh, in the position and other legacy manufacturers of where um, they have some disadvantages because they have all this legacy infrastructure that they have to somehow transition. But in a case like this, when now EV sales aren't going as quickly as, uh, or ramping up as quickly as, as people wanted, they can shift back and uh, emphasize their hybrid lineup over their EV lineup. So, and, and just delay things. They're not like canceling any programs. They, they're not a single thing has said Ford is canceling anything. So they're just delaying things by one to two years. And in the meantime, they're going to emphasize their uh, hybrids. So that gives them a little bit of leverage of like they can, they're making a ton of money off of the hybrids and their gas cars, which, you know, as an EV enthusiast, I want it to be like they're making tons of money off the EVs, but this is just the facts of life right now. Um, so as a long-term Ford strategy, this is good for them. As an EV enthusiast, I'm disappointed. So uh, we'll, we'll just make that clear. But this, this gives Ford a, a great opportunity to make money, to fund that EV development and wait, as they said, wait for the market to mature uh, their battery and uh, software technology, um, entertainment systems, all of that stuff is maturing. And then when they're uh, ready to go full EV um, with these new models, they'll be uh, ready to go. So it's it's that's all very interesting. I think that's where Ford, again, is using their advantage. Um, some people may disagree. They sort of see it as like Ford is investing in this, this technology that's dying. But um, I look at it as like they're going to use the profits from that. And if you look at the past uh, you know, quarters as well as 2023, Ford made a ton of money on hybrids and uh, their gas cars, and they lost a ton of money on EVs. They got to they switch that at some point. They can't survive. But being able to sort of you know, leverage things as they make the transition, I think, is a big advantage for them at least for now. That may change as they get deeper into the transition. Um, there are a lot of questions uh, that people are have is like, why would they delay that three row SUV? And this is some of my thoughts about that. So they're coming out with the new um, updated Ford Explorer. 
Um, I think that's like been their their cat one of their cash cows. They've been making a ton of money off of that, and um, by um, delaying the three row SUV, they can still capitalize on that cash cow for a bit longer. Um, I think you know, in my opinion, if they had a three row electric SUV, I think it would sell fantastically. Um, but again, you know, this is sort of like where legacy may have advantage slash disadvantage. The advantage is they can rely on that hybrid Ford Explorer. That's great. Um, the disadvantage is like if they did come out with that electric SUV Explorer like next year, um, it may take away sales from the hybrid or the, the regular Ford Explorer, put it into that EV three row SUV, which would be great as for me as an EV enthusiast. But if they're losing money on that, um, instead of making money on a equivalent Explorer, that's bad for the company. So again, disappointing for us as EV enthusiasts, uh, EV advocates, but uh, probably you know the right decision for Ford at this time. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, I've been asking, we have a Mustang Mach-E sitting out in the garage. Um, what's gonna happen to the Mach-E? We haven't heard any future plans. You notice they're talking about future EV models. Nothing has been said about the Mach-E, nothing about a refresh or anything like that. And, any of these statements in the past couple of weeks. So we don't know what's gonna happen with the Mustang Mach-E. Right now they're um, still um, you know, maintaining the, the, the Mach-E as is. They're making software improvements. There's some changes to the, the powertrain, the motors, I believe. But even that, we haven't heard anything official on what is changing in the Mach-E for 2024 and definitely nothing beyond that. It's getting to the point to where it's going to see, need some type of refresh. And the problem is, is like back in the day, you'd refresh your car and you would like change the design slightly and you're you're good to go. Um, a lot of people are calling for the Mach-E needs uh, faster charging, more range. And the only thing, the only way to really do that is to do some major redesign of the powertrain. And we haven't heard anything about them doing anything along those lines. So sort of concerning, like I, we, we want the Mach-E to be a success. Um, the, the sales were lagging for a bit. They were doing well at the end of uh, 2023. They were lagging in uh, January or February, and then all of a sudden they took off. And why did they take off? Because Ford dropped the price, added a lot of incentives. I don't know if that's sustainable for Ford as well. Um, do they need to make more money? We know they're losing money on the Mach-E as it is. Um, I believe they look at it as an investment for their future EV vehicles to um, work on their EV platform, get to know uh, customers, get to know uh, their subscription services and how that works and how willing people are to pay for um, charging subscriptions or Blue Crew subscriptions and all of that type of stuff. Like, I think they're learning a lot from the Mach-E and um, just on a personal level, like we're still getting a lot of support and updates in regards to our Mustang Mach-E. And I believe the Lightning is the same way. Uh, Ford is very proud of the F-150 Lightning. Um, and I think it's sort of, uh, you know, been overblown when people talk about like they're reducing production of the Lightning. Um, I think what it, what it is, is like Ford projected like a, 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 an uptick in Lightning sales and it's just not as big of an uptick. So I believe last year they sold, uh, I gotta find the number, I think it was like 24,000 Lightnings. Um, give me one second, I'll find that. Yeah, there it is. Uh, last year they sold 24,000 Lightnings um, and they are, uh, we're talking about at the Lightning assembly plant, they're going to reduce their capacity. Reducing their capacity still gives them the uh, option to make 40,000 Lightnings per year. And it's very easy for them to scale up if all of a sudden, you know, lightning sales take off for whatever reason. Um, but 40,000 is way higher than 24,000. So they still have a lot of capacity. Um, the problem is, is they were, they were um, originally going to make 40,000 and then they doubled it to 80,000. And then they said they have a capacity to make 160,000 if they go full capacity at the lightning assembly plant. Um, it just, the, the demand did not pan out there. So they're gonna scale back down to their original 40,000, which is what they were originally projecting, which is what they originally built out. So it's not like a, a disaster or anything like that. It's still a huge number of lightnings being sold. Um, of course, they have the hybrid lightning that's also doing fantastically well, especially in places 
um, like California out here, it's been doing great. I hear the numbers, the percentage of sales of uh, hybrid slash lightnings out here in California have crossed the 50% threshold. Um, you go to some places like maybe Oklahoma or something like that, and it's the, the opposite. That they're, they're not doing well there. So a lot of information uh, about all of that. Uh, there is something that I think a lot of people missed, and if you stuck around this long, um, I think this is sort of maybe this is a, a tidbit that um, we, you know, it's 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 out there, but I don't know if anybody put the pieces together. So uh, last fall, when Ford and UAW were doing their negotiations, um, one of the you know they they sort of listed like all of the concessions that Ford made and all the concessions that the UAW made. One of the the things that they listed there was a bullet point that said a new Ford EV truck uh, will be produced at the Lightning, uh, at the Rouge electric vehicle plant. Um, and at the time I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like T3 is their next generation truck. That's being built in Blue Oval City. They're definitely not gonna just stop making that. That that plant is coming online and that plant is going to be T3. So what Ford EV, uh, what Ford EV truck is that gonna be? And, uh, you know, at the time I was just like, hey, maybe I wonder if they're going to do like a, a new generation Maverick or Ranger or something like that and put that there. Well, since then, and I just sort of thought about this the other day, that's, you know, we've heard that Ford is talking about building um, that low cost EV platform that I mentioned earlier. Um, and in addition, Jim Farley said they are going to focus on what they do best. They're not going to try to necessarily um, shift their strategy just because they went EV. They're not going to try to make like a, a Model S competitor or something like that or a Model 3 competitor. They don't do sedans. They're like, we do trucks and we do trucks very well. And as we transition to EV, we're going to capitalize on our experience. So um, putting together the pieces, Ford is wanting to be a leader in trucks. Um, they are de developing a low cost platform and it was mentioned that the low cost platform could be used in multiple form factors, including a truck and the UAW um, negotiations bullet point as saying that there will be a new Ford EV truck built at the Lightning facility in Dearborn. Um, to me, that's really exciting. And, and the reason is, is like, first of all, that sort of shows like, okay, the, the Skunk Works team has been working for two years. Um, a lot of automotive development can take years and years and years. The fact that they're using a Skunk Works team means that they may be moving at a very, very fast pace, sort of like what they did with the Mach-E. That was developed in, in not record time, but very quick time for a large manufacturer developing like a new product, like a, a, an EV uh, Mustang SUV. Um, so if the Skunk Works team is also working very fast, that's great, but I was, um, you know, in in my mind, I was like, where are they going to build it? Because we sort of know what factories are out there and what they're doing with these factories. Um, so I was like, it, it must be a while away because where are they going to be able to put this EV truck? So now combining uh, all of this information and the fact that the uh, the Lightning may not need all of that capacity um, and may wind down once T3 comes online, boom, there you have it. New Budget EV truck maybe be maybe replacing the uh, the Lightning um, or being built alongside of it because as we were talking about they had the capacity for um, up to one hundred sixty thousand they've got that down to um, back down to forty thousand so I'm guessing there's some extra capacity room there of course they'll need um, different equipment or reconfigure the equipment and the line or whatever but. This is just me projecting. I'm not an automotive industry expert, but I'm like, that seems like logical. And um, what's exciting to me is that means it may be able to come quicker than we than a lot of people are expecting. Um, when we heard Skunk Works, they're working on something, uh, but there was a factory associated with it and details coming. I was like, that might be a ways off. It could be like 2030 for all we know, or 2028 or something like that. But uh, this is giving me hope that maybe that EV low cost platform could be built uh, in Dearborn. And the fact that they're talking about a flexible platform, it could be something like a uh, electric Ford Maverick size vehicle, as well as a electric Bronco Sport slash escape size vehicle as well. Um, both of those would be high volume, which is what they said the Skunk Works team is working on. Um, and both of those are sort of the lower cost uh, 
parts of the, the Ford product line. So if they had an EV equivalent there that they could sell a ton of with some um, new battery technology, um, as they mentioned, they're waiting for battery technology to develop. There, there could be something gangbusters coming out of like the, the Ford plant in Dearborn in relatively short amount of time. Now, short amount of time, it could still be 2028 or something like that. Um, I'm hoping maybe it's uh, 2027 as well, maybe a little bit earlier. Uh, if they're going to do 2026, we're in 2024 now. They sort of, um, if you look at the way that the, uh, the Maki and Lightning came about, it was really only about a year's difference from when they announced them with the final production intent design to when they went into production. Uh, Ford uh, will do concept cars and stuff like that, but they're generally like, when they wanna show you something, it's like, here it is, and we're gonna start getting ready for production. So uh, we may not hear anything about this Skunk Works low budget thing for another year or so, but at that, at that time, if we're gonna see something in 2026, that's when we would probably see some more news about that. So um, overall, you know, we'll, just a quick summary. Yes, Ford EV sales are up. The overall EV market is, is up, but not up as much as uh, everybody is projecting. Ford is uh, delaying things, but not really significantly in the grand scheme of things. They are leveraging their uh, profitable hybrid sales to prepare for this transition. And maybe there's a surprise for us with the Skunk Works team. Um, there's a lot of other exciting stuff with, with Ford just to see so much battery capacity and production capacity coming online. And hopefully over the next couple of years, we'll see some other news specifically for me personally as a Mustang Mach-E owner. I hope that we get like a refreshed or maybe all new Mustang Mach-E coming up in the next couple of years that we can look forward to. Um, if you have any questions, projections, or any of that other stuff, uh, drop them down in the comments. Let me know if you like this type of video. Um, we generally just wanna focus on the cars, not necessarily get into stocks or anything like that, but I think this is important news. Uh, if you're like me and a, an owner, you wanna see what's coming out from uh, the future from Ford. If you're an EV enthusiast like me, you want it all to just happen right now. So uh, drop all your comments down below and we can continue this conversation. We try to respond to all of those comments. Thank you for sticking around and watching this whole video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up, share it so that other people get this information. We spread the news, uh, but thank you for sticking around. Thank you to our channel members. They get like special emojis and stuff like that. Go check down in the comments. You'll see a few of those. Um, we have that at like the $2 a month level. You get all of those special perks. We also have Patreon. We've had some Patreon members supporting us for over three years. Um, we have the Whisper, the Engage, and Unbridled level there. You get different level of perks for each of those. Um, some We even actually mail you out some stuff on the uh, unbridled level. Pretty cool. Two, four, and six dollars for that. You can join that down below, but thank you to them. We're going to scroll their names here as I always forget. Um, but thank you for uh, all of your comments and suggestions. If you have anything, just drop it down below. And as Liv would say, just remember, whatever you drive, whether it's a Ford EV, Ford Hybrid, some other EV, whatever the case may be, enjoy the ride. Bye.